Our solar system is home to many different environments, from the crushing inferno of Venus to the suffocating cold of Mars, from the paper-thin atmosphere of Mercury to the unending hurricanes of the gas giants. There is no shortage of extremes for astronomers to explore and for science to be made. Often overlooked, its many moons are as diverse as the planets in sizes, atmospheres and geological features. Some are even estimated to have several times more water than Earth. Among them, there's one that has surprised scientists for decades, and could even be the safest bet of finding life elsewhere in our solar system. Titan. Discovered by astronomer Christian Huygens in 1655, Titan is the largest moon of Saturn and second largest in the solar system, losing only to Ganymede of Jupiter. It's bigger than the planet Mercury and more than twice the size of Pluto. If it would orbit the Sun instead of Saturn, it would definitely be considered a planet. The moon's composition is not unique among those in the outer planets, but it is certainly alien compared to what most of us are accustomed to. 10 times further away from the Sun than Earth, and tidally locked to Saturn. It takes almost 16 days to orbit the planet, and 29 years to orbit the Sun. At this distance, it receives so little sunlight that the surface temperature is minus 179 degrees Celsius. Titan is half water ice and half rocky material, with a silicate core surrounded by ice 6, a form of high pressure ice that can exist even in temperatures as high as 80 degrees Celsius. After this ice, there's a layer of several kilometers deep containing a salty water ocean, mixed with ammonia, which mixture would allow the water to stay liquid even at normally freezing conditions. Enveloping this salty ocean, there is a crust of regular water ice, that due to Titan's extremely low surface temperatures, behaves much like Earth's rocky crust. This solid layer is decoupled from the interior, which means it floats and shifts on top of the interior ocean. The interaction between the oceanic layer and ice crust works much like Earth's magma and its own crust, creating volcanoes as pressure builds up. But rather than erupting molten rock, on Titan, the cryovolcanoes would erupt volatiles such as water, ammonia and methane, spewing a super chilled liquid into its atmosphere. But the weirdness of Titan isn't over, so let's talk about the rain. Many moons in the solar system have underground oceans, like Ganymede, Europa, and Enceladus. Some have even cryovolcanoes and geysers. But unlike them, Titan is the only known moon with a significant atmosphere surrounding its frozen crust. It's 96% nitrogen, 3.5% methane, and 0.5% hydrogen, with traces of argon, carbon monoxide, and a lot of hydrocarbons. This atmosphere is denser than Earth's, with a surface pressure of about 1.48 times that of our planet. At this pressure, and with Titan's low surface temperature, methane, which is normally a gas on places like Earth and Mars, can exist as a liquid. And this means that just like Earth has a water cycle, Titan has one of its own, but with methane. Titan has lakes, rain, and it's the only other solar system body known to have large amounts of liquid on its surface. This is important because the water cycle is a key part of the development of life on our own planet. It's how water reaches plants, animals, and it also moves things like nutrients, pathogens, and sediment in and out of aquatic ecosystems. And water is key to life on Earth because it is capable of dissolving more substances than any other liquid, being even dubbed the universal solvent. It means that wherever water goes, either through the air, the ground, or through our bodies, it takes along valuable chemicals, minerals, and nutrients. On Titan, a similar process could occur with methane. We talked about the importance of methane in biological processes before. However, Titan is the only place on the solar system that we found so far where the molecule can exist as a liquid instead of gas. So even though methane, unlike water, is a non-polar molecule, which diminishes its solvent properties, Titan's surface and atmosphere are full of hydrocarbons, allowing for the formation of complex organic molecules as the liquid methane circulates through the planet on its cycle. In fact, 
NASA's Cassini spacecraft already detected neutral and ionised molecules in Titan's ionosphere, including anions and negatively charged molecules. These linear molecules are understood to be building blocks of more complex molecules, and might even have acted as the basis for the earliest forms of life on Earth. And Cassini wasn't alone. Titan is one of the few bodies in the solar system where we have already landed. The Cassini-Huygens Space Research Mission was a collaboration between NASA, the ESA and the Italian Space Agency to send both a space probe to orbit Saturn and a lander to descend into the clouds of Titan. Cassini was the first probe to orbit Saturn and the Huygens lander was the first human-made object to land on a world in the distant outer solar system. Until the Cassini-Huygens mission, little was known about Titan save that it was a Mercury-sized world whose surface was veiled beneath a thick, nitrogen-rich atmosphere. We couldn't see the surface at all, let alone observe any geological processes. What laid beneath the thick, orange clouds was still largely a mystery. Arriving on Saturn in 2004, Cassini orbited Saturn for 13 years, studying the planet and its system until 2017. Meanwhile, Huygens successfully landed by parachute on Titan on January 14th, 2005, returning a lot of data to Earth. As it descended for two and a half hours, Huygens took measurements of Titan's atmospheric composition and pictures of its surface. The probe not only survived the descent and landing, but it continued to transmit data for about 90 minutes on the Moon's frigid surface until its batteries were drained. It was the first to make direct measurements of Titan's lower atmosphere. Over the years, Cassini would complete more than 100 targeted flybys of Titan, using its suit of tools, including radar and infrared instruments, to peer through Titan's haze and finally give scientists a detailed view of the Moon's surface and complex atmosphere. The probe revealed details of the Moon's environment, like lakes, clouds, rain, and a subsurface ocean of salty water. It also saw distinct seasons, lasting about 7.5 Earth years each. Starting in 2011, the spacecraft caught glimpses of the transition from fall to winter at Titan's South Pole the first time anyone has seen the onset of a Titan winter, and watched as summer came to the north. We've also discovered giant sand dunes hundreds of kilometres along the moon's equator, made of solid water ice coated with hydrocarbons that fall from the atmosphere. The information gathered by both the probe and the lander revealed a surprisingly Earth-like world and raised fascinating new questions for subsequent studies. Yet, the scientists weren't done. Cassini might have finished its mission in 2017, but we are going to Titan once more this time with a flying robot. NASA's Dragonfly will be a robotic lander with eight rotors and is intended to make the first powered and fully controlled atmospheric flight on any moon. It'll weigh about 450 kilograms and fly like a large drone, taking advantage of Titan's dense atmosphere, four times denser than Earth's, to fly its entire science payload to new places for repeatable and targeted access to the surface materials. Thanks to more than a decade of Cassini data, NASA was able to choose a calm weather period to land, along with a relatively safe site full of promising scientific targets. Dragonfly will first land at the equatorial Shangri-La dune fields, which are terrestrially similar to the linear dunes in Nambia in southern Africa and offer a diverse sampling location. The aircraft will explore this region by performing controlled flights and vertical takeoffs, stopping along the way to take samples from compelling areas with diverse geography. It will finally reach the Selk Impact Crater, where there is evidence of past liquid water, organics and energy, which together make up the recipe for life. The lander will eventually fly more than 175 kilometers, nearly double the distance travelled to date by all the Mars rovers combined. Due to the lander's size and Titan's distance to the Sun, Solar power is impractical, so Dragonfly will be powered by a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, generating energy through the heat of decaying radioactive elements, like the ones already in use by the Curiosity and Perseverance Mars rovers. The mission is expected to launch in 2027, and reach Saturn by 2034. One of the most fascinating, unique, and surprisingly Earth-like places in the solar system, Titan remained shrouded by mystery for centuries due to its hazy and opaque orange atmosphere. It was only in the 20th century when we finally managed to peer through its clouds and discover a world full of possibilities. Much is said about life on Mars, 
but perhaps the place most likely to have alien life might be further beyond, orbiting Saturn right now. One thing is for sure though, if there is life on Titan, it would be nothing like we've ever seen. Thanks for joining us this week in Access Astronomy. We hope to see you here next week as we continue to look to the sky and search the universe for wonders.